In this video, we're going to be talking Zigbee. We're going to cover my favorite Zigbee coordinator as well as getting ZHA set up in Home Assistant. And we're going to talk about some of my favorite Zigbee devices that I'm using in my smart home. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. I've been working on getting Home Assistant set up in my new house. I've already added some LifeX bulbs back and set up my audio system that handles playing the audio throughout the house so that we can enjoy some music while we're unpacking. But in this video, we're going to be talking Zigbee. Because I have all of these Zigbee devices that I took from my other house that I need to get set up in this house. And for this, we're going to be using Zigbee Home Automation or ZHA. It's been a while since my last video. Work, unpacking all of these boxes, and then a bout of COVID really slowed my video production down. But during that time, I've been tinkering with Home Assistant, and I decided to go with ZHA for my Zigbee integration instead of Zigbee to MQTT. The big reason for that is I may be moving to the Home Assistant Yellow in the future. And since that device comes with a Zigbee radio, all ready to go with ZHA, I figured ZHA might be the natural choice. Besides, making that move now means that when I decide to migrate from my Home Assistant Blue to the Home Assistant Yellow, that migration should go relatively easy. In any case, whatever Zigbee integration you decide to go with, either ZHA or Zigbee to MQTT, both will serve you well. If you're looking to add some separation between your Home Assistant instance and your Zigbee integration, then Zigbee to MQTT is probably the right choice. If, however, you would rather have your Zigbee integration maintained by the Home Assistant team and be part of Home Assistant Core, then you're probably going to be leaning towards ZHA. In any case, you're going to need a Zigbee coordinator, like this Sonoff Zigbee 3.0 USB stick. I really like this adapter a lot because it does have an external antenna which really helps increase the signal reach. Plus, you can set up this device as a router, which means if you find some dead spots on your Zigbee network, you can simply flash another one of these sticks with the router firmware, drop it on your network, and extend the reach of that Zigbee network. I plan on discussing that in a future video. Just know for now that this USB stick could be used either as a coordinator or a router. This Zigbee USB stick will work with either ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT out of the box. But since we can flash it, we're going to go ahead and update the firmware to the latest version. The first thing we're going to need is the coordinator firmware from the Zigbee to MQTT project for our Sonoff adapter. To grab that, we're going to head over to the zigbee to mqtt.io webpage. I'll leave a link to it in the description of the video. To find the firmware for our Sonoff USB stick, we're going to head to Guide and then Supported Adapters. In this group at the top, you'll see the Sonoff Zigbee 3.0 USB Dongle Plus, which is the one we want. When we click on that, we get options for the coordinator, the router, as well as flashing instructions and a link to buy this adapter if you don't already have it. All we're going to need from this right here is the coordinator. So let's go ahead and click on that coordinator firmware, which should download a file. We should get this nice zip file here that when we open it contains a hex file. We're going to need this file a little bit later. So what we're going to do is copy this and put this in a different folder. I've created a folder called Sonoff Flashing, and I've dropped this hex file into that folder. Now, of course, there's lots of different ways to flash this Sonoff USB stick, but the method I'm going to cover is using a Python script. I like going this route because it means I don't have to mess with the hardware like putting it in bootloader mode. Of course, this does mean that you'll need Python on whatever machine you're going to do your flashing on. If you're running Mac OS or Linux, you're probably already good. For you Windows folks, you're going to need to add Python or flash it in a different way. I'm using a Python script provided by Gelmore T on GitHub. Again, there'll be a link to it in the description. He has instructions for Python on Windows, but I haven't used them, so I can't vouch for how easy or how hard it is. But for those of you on Mac or Linux, this is about as easy as it gets. 
First, download the repo by clicking code and then downloading the zip file. We'll need to unzip that and grab the cc2538-bsl.py file and copy it to that Sonoff flash directory we referenced earlier. All that's left after that is to plug in our Sonoff stick. But before we do that, I'm going to see what USB ports are in use. How you do this will be different on your machine, but for Linux and Mac OS, it should be as easy as just going to the command line and typing ls space slash dev slash tty dot asterisk and hitting enter. Once you get a list of your current devices, plug the USB stick in and then run that command again. You should now have another entry on that list and it should be the address to your USB stick. We're going to need this USB address, so copy it and then let's run that BSL script. In my case, since all of my files are in the same directory, I just need to make sure that I'm in the directory with that BSL script and that I have the hex file there as well. And I can double check that by just running ls to list the files in the directory since I'm on Mac OS. Then you'll want to run this command, python3, in my case, since I'm running python3, then space cc2538-bsl.py space dash evw for erase, verify, and write dash p for the port, then we're going to put space, and then we're going to paste in that port address to our USB stick, then after that, space dash dash bootloader dash sonoff dash USB space, and then we're going to put in the path to that hex file for our coordinator firmware. Since everything's in the same directory, I don't have to include anything, I just need the file name. Once you have all of that, you just hit enter. And just like that, flashing is complete. Before you plug this Zigbee stick into your Home Assistant instance, I suggest grabbing a USB extension cable or a USB hub if you have one of those laying around. In my experience, it makes things a little more stable with these USB dongles. But once you've got your cable and you're all set to go, just plug that Sonoff stick into your Home Assistant instance and then jump into Home Assistant. Okay, so setting up the Zigbee integration is super easy, especially with ZH8 because it is built in and it is an integration that is already part of Home Assistant Core. To set it up, once we have our USB dongle flashed and ready to go and plugged in to our Home Assistant instance, we can head over to settings and then integrations. Sometimes you'll be lucky enough that it will pop up here and offer it as a suggestion to set up but I've set this thing up so many times that Home Assistant has just stopped letting me know when that USB stick is plugged in. So if you don't see it popped up here as one of the discovered integrations, that's fine. You can go down and click Add Integration. And then choose ZHA. It'll prompt you with a list of the dongles that are already connected to your Home Assistant instance. Just pick the one that you want to use, in this case the Sonoff 3.0, and hit Submit. It's going to take just a few minutes to get it all set up and running. And there we go, it's ready to go. We've got our Zigbee coordinator there, and we can click Finish. Now we're ready to start adding devices. Okay, now that ZHA is up and running, it's time to start adding our devices. Zigbee devices fall into one of two categories, routers and end devices. Routers are typically those on mains power, like Zigbee switches and smart plugs. Zigbee light bulbs typically don't fall into that router category though, so be sure you check the device information. End devices are typically the battery powered sensors like motion sensors, contact sensors, and those light bulbs. And they're called end devices because they don't route that signal beyond themselves. Since those devices acting as routers can help boost your Zigbee signal, I suggest adding all of them first. Starting with the devices closest to your Zigbee coordinator or your home assistant instance, and then working your way out towards the edge of your house. 
This will start to build a pretty good foundation for your Zigbee mesh network. And pairing these devices is pretty easy. The first step is to put ZHA in pairing mode. To do that, we click configure under the ZHA integration, and then we click add device. This will get ZHA listening for any new Zigbee devices. Now you need to put the Zigbee device you want to add in pairing mode itself. How you do that differs from device to device, but I find most Zigbee devices, with the exception of light bulbs, have a button that you hold for around three seconds until the device flashes to tell you that it's ready to pair. At that point, ZHA should hear that device and start the interview process. Once completed, you can rename the device and mark its location if you're using areas, and then move to the next one. And don't worry if you don't get it connected the first time. Zigbee is pretty forgiving. You can kick off the pairing process again with already paired devices and nothing will break. A tablet or a laptop is pretty good to carry around as you're pairing these devices since you're going to want to execute that pairing process near the final location for each of the devices. Plus, once you've enabled pairing mode, it will eventually disable. And having that laptop or tablet means you don't have to run back to a desktop across the house just to re-enable pairing. Plus, you can rename those devices relatively easy as you go. After I've added all of the Zigbee routers on my network, I go back and start adding all of those end devices like the motion sensors and the contact sensors. And speaking of Zigbee devices, let's talk about some of those that I use in my smart home. These devices here probably represent the four most used Zigbee devices in my smart home. I have a ton of these little smart plugs, and by a ton, I mean six or eight of these specific inner plugs. These things are pretty cheap, and their form factor makes it easy to use them in wall outlets without blocking the other outlets. Plus, they are Zigbee routers, so they can help extend your Zigbee network. I use them a lot for wax warmers, small fans, and other small devices that I want to automate or at least be able to shut power off to when we leave. These Akara motion sensors are in almost every room. I've been slowly adding the new P1s to replace the older version of these sensors. They're pretty cheap, and the P1s have the added advantage of being able to adjust that sensor timeout for that motion sensor. However, I can't see that you can adjust that sensor timeout with ZHA, but you can with Zigbee to MQTT. Third Reality also sent me some sensors to use in my smart home, including this contact sensor. These work really well and they're powered by two AAA batteries and they pair easily with ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. My previous house used Z-Wave contact sensors for all of the doors, but I'm really enjoying these third reality Zigbee sensors. So I'm going to be using these for the foundation of my security system, which we'll talk about more in a future video. And lastly, these third reality motion sensors are pretty great for putting in locations where you don't have a lot of space because of their slim form factor. They are a bit taller, and that's because they use full-size batteries instead of those small coin-size batteries. But you can easily put them up using these command hook picture Velcro thingies, which are overkill for sure, but once they're up, they stay put. And I like using these on things like stairs because you can put them on a banister and they're pretty much hidden. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to the previous video I did on Zigbee to MQTT, as well as a link to a video by Smart Home Junkie. He did a recent video on how to set up Zigbee to MQTT with this sewn off Zigbee 3.0 stick. If you want to support Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find a link to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store, as well as affiliate links and a link to buy me a coffee if you so choose in the description of this video. Or simply let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button. And consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.